Okay, so here we go. Hi, everybody. So we are entering into the week that we're going to be talking about visual social media. And I have a very special guest. Actually, both of us, Matt and I, were both at the same conference all week called PubCon. And it's actually Friday night as we're recording this. And we've been in Vegas for five days. So Yes. <laughs> I feel privileged, um, right? <laughs> right. Um, so Matt Satella is here with us. And he's he has his own agency, Avalanche, which is an award-winning um, agency that specializes in, amongst other things, visual social media marketing. So Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself and your agency and then we'll get into the interview. All right. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I've been in this industry for uh, a long time, <laughs> as you know, um, been uh, the agency side of it. Uh, like you said, we focus a lot on the visual content, but we're a full service digital marketing firm. We do a lot with uh, the paid advertising side. You know, we have a PPC team. We have, you know, the normal, uh, uh, SEO side of it and account managers and all that and we have a whole design team and so uh, we're about 45 employees now which is kind of crazy to think you know just a few years ago it was uh, me and a couple partners and even a few years before that it was just me so um, yeah we uh, we've grown a lot and uh, we love all things digital marketing and um, you know speak at a lot of conferences get to meet awesome people such as yourself yeah, and you uh, you specialize and you focus a lot of your presentations on visual social media marketing and visual social media and visual content. So that's right. what we're going to be yeah. talking about today. So, Matt, what is the big deal when it comes to visuals and social media? Well, um, you know, the thing that I, when, when people ask this question, the thing that I come back to more than anything is um, it's how we consume content. We're such visual people, Okay. Um, we get distracted so easily. You know, I think about the way that my kids consume content and, you know, they're so spoiled this day and age. They, you know, my, I had to laugh the other day when my son was watching a, uh, we were watching a live sporting event, but a commercial came on and he's wanting to fast forward the commercials. I'm like, that's not how it works. You spoiled, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, we just, you know, but, but getting back on track, you know, just kind of, uh, throwing that out there just because things have changed but um you know we, we process the images so much faster and i think about like you know when we're on facebook and we're scrolling through or we're on instagram and we're looking you know are you going to take the time and read along you know again especially if you're on the move or you know you're just you're busy i think the majority of people are not going to stop and and scroll through thousands of uh, words you know versus if there is a visual that is kind of sharing that exact same concept. Like the ones that I like to, to think about in, in this specific you know, example that I'm talking about is uh, mapping. Um, you know, like it, you're looking at a, at a text post that has all the different top searches for states in Google and you have to read through it all. Or if you could see like a visual, a map, where it easily shares that, you're gonna look at that image and you're gonna stay on that image a lot more. You might like look at the first Arizona or Alabama or something, you know, and you get bored of it, you'll move off of it. But if, if it's in a nice visual where it's easy to consume, you're probably going to stay. And, and, and that's the difference. Okay, got it. So if you're just so a personal brand, let's say, or a small business starting out in social media, what are some, what's advice that you can give if you don't really have a big budget and you want to stand out using visuals? Um, you got to start somewhere and uh, you know, there's no excuse with like, there's meme generators out there that are 99 cents. You could even find, you know, if you're cheaper than 99 cents, you could find free ones. And uh, you know, there's lots of opportunity, just paying attention to what's going on, uh, paying attention to what's going on in your industry and in the news, uh, everything around you um, and identifying those influencers. Like every different space has influencers that could help them or that can help push their brand. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to always, I, I tell people, you don't have to get the Michael Jordan. Sometimes, you know, you, you can get someone that's even in high school or someone that's even, um, you know, that's not known across like, you know, everywhere, but is known in their, in their space. Has a, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, that's one area and, and definitely, um, just, just doing something, you know, you have uh, uh, such a huge opportunity with like, Pinterest to connect with, or, or um, you know, well, Pinterest too, but uh, Instagram, you have such a huge opportunity to build a community and let people know, 
you know, what your products are, show them in context. Uh, don't just, you know, show a picture of the product, show how it looks on someone. Um, use that opportunity to, to really build and connect with a, a community. I think you can do that visually through a lot of these platforms. Okay, great. And so what are some do's and don'ts? I'm sure you see the fails and you see the big successes. So what are some of your favorite do's and don'ts when it comes to visual social media? Uh, you know, the, definitely the don'ts are a lot of times people, they, they want to create an infographic because they were told they have to create an infographic or they, they heard at a conference, I need to create an infographic or again, I'm just using that as an example, but if you don't have purpose behind it, or if you don't kind of figure out the whole strategy behind it, you don't figure out, okay, I, I'm already thinking way ahead. Like before I even um, create the infographic or even think about the idea, I'm thinking about the people that I want to, you know, the influencers, I'm thinking about who I want to reach out to, who I can help or, or reach out to that would help me, um, you know, better uh, articulate the message with this, whatever, you know, whatever graphic it is I'm working on. And so I think just putting something out there to put something out there is definitely the wrong thing to do and, and what I see a lot. And that's how come you see a lot of crappy infographics or visuals that are out there. But the ones that have um, a point behind them that drive home a story that, you know, you have gone through that whole process that I talked about with, you know, working with people on the front end, coming up with this whole ideation and, and putting together a good story. Like, it has to tell a story. I know that a lot of people say, you know, your infographics are, are more for the, the social shares or the link building. And, it, and it's true. There is a lot to do with that. But they can also help you with conversion and sales when they're done right. And that's where I think a lot of people go wrong with them. Okay, great. And so the right, the, the do's would be to just do it with purpose and intention. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So do you have any favorite tools when it comes to visual social media? Um, there's, well, and again, these would be more for just research. Um, mm -hmm. One of the ones that I'm, and again, these are just always looking for ideas and how you can do stuff better. But like um, visually, uh, it's, it's just, you know, the dot L-Y visual and then dot leave. But, but I, uh, I like going through there and seeing what the top, uh, you know, what the top shared uh, graphics are, what the top shared interactive videos, whatever it might be. Um, those ones, any kind of, uh, there's a lot of uh, photo editing software that is super cheap. Um, you can optimize your images. Uh, again, there's just so many to mention. A couple of them, and, and I just got to remember the names of them really quick, but, you know, just kind of pulling out my phone here and, and showing you, um, See right here? Yeah, perfect. Some, some of the ones that uh, I love. Um, there's an app called Moments. Um, definitely one that I use for, you know, it helps you with, I, I don't want to say, I don't know, I guess stop motion, mm -hmm. but you can combine a bunch of uh, pictures. I do a lot with uh, Shred Video. Um, and then, you know, there's the the Over It tool. Uh, but But again, there's a lot of these apps like that and you could just do searches for them in the app store you could find you know um or even if you're you know there's there's lots of different uh, uh pretty affordable web apps that are out there you just search for uh you know help with uh making them uh more web friendly or um reducing the file size of your images things right, like that's that a big those, are, those are the tools that we're always using okay so let's talk specifically about pinterest and i was just at PubCon and you talked about Pinterest and we we're actually sharing one of your your slides with the class um, as kind of awesome. a signed reading and so we don't want to go into every detail but what um, why is Pinterest so awesome what do you love about Pinterest well this was eye-opening to me um, when I was talking with uh, probably about a month ago I was chatting with my wife about something I was putting together a, a presentation and and I just asked her, I just, I was just curious. And I was like, when's the last, but well, because this question had been brought up. And so I was just curious, uh, not brought up here at home, but, but elsewhere. And so I asked her, I was like, when's the last time that you um, searched for something on Google? And I was thinking she'd say like a week ago or a month ago. I know she's not on it very often, but it like floored me when she said, I haven't looked at anything on Google in probably like two years. Wow. And I was like, 
whoa, you know, because people are always saying, hey, Google's always going to dominate. And uh, now that's not to say that she hasn't seen Google ads or clicked on or made them money, you know, from other stuff. But as far as a search engine and what she's using, it's no longer Google. She's not using that. She's not looking for what she needs anymore. And I understand, you know, she is a stay at home mom and she's a different demographic than, than, than some, um, but there's a huge demographic of stay at home moms. And so I'm guessing that they're the way that they search isn't a lot different, but she said, I just do everything on Pinterest now. Uh, it's visual. It's got everything right there. Um, it's very, um, you know, amazingly organized. I can see exactly what I'm looking for with, with, uh, you know, whether I'm looking for recipe ideas or the do it to yourself projects or whatever it might be, but I do a search for it and I see that, that, uh, the, the visuals right there laid out for me and it makes it so much easier than doing, you know, uh, an annoying uh, Google search where you have to scroll through and hope that what you're clicking on is going to bring you to the right images. You could see it right there. And that, you know, that spoke volumes to me because again, we were, we're talking about visual and the trend and that's what Pinterest is. Like, I'm not saying that it's the next search engine, but it's definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest visual search engine. So if you're on Pinterest, I guess it's pretty important to get found and make it as easy as possible to get found. Absolutely. And, and you know, how do you do that? So, so what are some of the ways that brands you can dominate on Pinterest? What are just some, some highlights? You know, yeah, that that's, it's a great question because a lot of times people think that, you know, let's just post and pray or let me just link up to it or, or like it. You know, the thing that's awesome about Pinterest is they've done a really good job on the back end for making it easy for us to just take advantage of, of what they offer us to, to rank. For example, just with your titles and your descriptions and how they give you the ability to link uh, to your content and things like that. Um, the problem is a lot of people, they're not paying attention to stuff like that. So, uh, you know, if I, if I have a recipe site, you know, this would be the, the good example of what not to do. If, if I have a lot of different recipes about, you know, baking cookies and baking cakes and, and baking brownies or whatever, I'm not going to just throw up a, a, a pen that's a recipe and just like in the title put, you know, one of my favorite recipes. Okay. I'm going to put something more along the lines of, you know, um, double chocolate brownie recipe. Like I'm going to make sure that those titles and those descriptions and those keywords that are used that really describe that particular piece of content or that visual piece of content, because that's going to start ranking. And I think, you know, that's where a lot of uh, opportunity, you have so much opportunity, you know, like, like a lot of time we want to focus, okay, the SEO, the optimization, it's only going to be done on my website, on my business, you know, people forget that they have this whole other opportunity to optimize and rank and be found for just with their boards and their categories and what they pin. Right. And not just for Pinterest, right? I mean, this yeah. goes for Facebook. Absolutely. Uh, and um, Instagram to some extent, um, but e pretty much each social media network could be considered its own you know, search engine. We're, we're trying to optimize to be found because people are, like you said, they're not really searching in Google as much. They're searching within their social network, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, and that's another good point to those that may be on the fence of, oh, do I need to really get into another social network for my business? Well, you know, no one's holding a gun to your head saying you have to do it, but you're just missing out on traffic and opportunities if you're not. Like there's people I know that their whole businesses and everything they do are run on Instagram or Facebook. A lot of these places don't even spend a lot of time or have a little, lot of focus on their actual website. They spend more time with their community. And again, I'm not, don't take that wrong in saying, you know, I don't have to have a website, but I think you get the point. <laughs> exactly. So what are some, um, do you have any Pinterest secret hacks that you want to share? Maybe one or two of your secret tips that you don't <laughs> tell anybody? <laughs> well, yeah. One of the, one of the things that I'm always, um, you know, or that I'm always suggesting to people to do that they're like, oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. But most people don't pay attention to their Pinterest analytics, okay? And you have really good insights there, you know, sharing with things like, uh, you know, your, your, your most viewed pins and your top like and all, you know, all of all the data that you know that's in there. Well, start paying attention to that stuff because you know that um, the shelf life of a pin is longer than any other social network that's out there. Um, I don't have the stats in front of me, but they're on the deck. They're on the deck, and, yeah. Yeah, and you guys can go and check that out, but... 
But uh, pay attention to those, that, that kind of content that people are connecting with and that they're loving and that they're sharing on Pinterest. And then you can repurpose that content on other social networks like Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. So if you're wondering, okay, how do I come up with good content for Instagram? Uh, I'm brand new to it. I've been doing Pinterest for a while, but how do I get some good content on Instagram? Go back to your um, Pinterest pages and see, you know, your analytics and see, okay, well, what are, what's the content that my community is connecting with and then repurpose that content and use it on those other social networks. That would be like, um, you know, one of the, one of the biggest ones, but uh, another one that I think is pretty good is that, that people don't do like, let's say you've been working on Pinterest for a while and you have some boards that have a decent following and that, you know, when you pin something, you know, you, you have a lot of people commenting and it's getting good traffic or it ranks really well. Well, if you have a new um, category or a new board that you've created that you want to start getting some traction to, well, create a new image that's, that is pinned to one of those other more popular boards directing people to your new boards. And again, it's just another good way to. to oh, I like that. I'm going to use that one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, thanks. So can you tell us some of your favorite brands on Pinterest? Yeah, I love watching, um, yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of them, but uh, just a couple that come to mind. I love the Southwest Airlines because they actually encourage people to take pictures, you know, outside the window and use their phones and, you know, tell us what you're seeing. And, you know, it's, it's such more of a, the, the way that they go about that. If you think about, and you and I travel a lot, so we have lots of opportunity to complain about airlines. And we know that there's a lot of complaints that are always going on about airlines. And so they've kind of taken the, Hey, you know, show us, you know, show us the good side of it. And you can, you might be featured on these uh, pages or these boards or on Instagram or whatever it might be. But, uh, but I love the, what they've done at, at Southwest airlines. And, and I would have never guessed Southwest airlines. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. And then the, the duck brand, obviously, you know, you have, well, duck brand and Sharpie. The thing that I love about them is you think, okay, well, how exciting is duct tape or how's it, how exciting is a Sharpie? But what's cool about it is those pages, they're full of DIY stuff of what to do with duct tape, what to do with your Sharpies. And anyway, it's pretty awesome. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. So for the students out there that are going to be graduating, moving on to professional social media world, what advice would you give? Um, just test. Don't be afraid to, you know, don't, don't be afraid that, hey, I'm not going to do this because I'm, I'm going to break something or I'm going to do something wrong. You know, I've been doing this forever and I've always pushed limits on certain things. Again, I'm talking like, you know, I wouldn't risk it on if you're, if you're doing it with a uh, client stuff, but you know, your own stuff, test, build something, see what you could do, see what limits you could push, see, you know, just uh, do something yourself. Um, and don't worry about, you know, doing it wrong or there, there's, there's so many different industries and there's so many different right and and wrong ways to do stuff. Just figure it out. Uh, don't hesitate to jump into it. Don't feel like, and, and the big, biggest piece of advice, because I hear this the most is, well, how can I compete with everyone else that's already doing stuff online? Well, um, I have two mattress companies online. One was acquired um, for, for a decent sum, and we're growing an even bigger one. And this started, you know, 10 years ago, but there's been mattress companies forever. And if I was to, you know, go back then and say, well, I don't, I can't, because uh, we sell a memory foam and a latex, but at the time, you know, it was just a uh, Tempur-Pedic was a big one. If I say, well, Tempur-Pedic selling memory foam, I can't compete with them. Then I would have lost out on a lot of revenue and a lot of opportunities that it's brought me. So don't ever think that, that, uh, you know, that I can't get into something because someone's already doing it or that it's too oversaturated or whatnot. Just you figure out how to put your unique position on it you figure out your passion with it. Um, you know, there's a good chance that it's going to be successful. I'm not saying everything you put out there is going to um, succeed, but I think a lot of the times when we're, when we're doing that and if we do fail, we, we learn a lot and we grow from that, but just don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to succeed. Don't be afraid to fail. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, Matt, after this interview, where can everybody follow you? Which social networks? What's your handle? Um, they could find me on Twitter. Um, either just at, at Matt, M-A-T-T -T underscore Siltala, that's S-I-L-T-A-L-A, or you can just Google some, you know, form of that or Avalanche Media and uh, my name will pop up and you'll find me that way. <laughs> 
One more quick question. This came up at the conference. I'd love your opinion on it. Okay. What's your prediction on the future of Twitter? Um, you know, it's interesting. It seems like nobody wants to buy it, but I don't think that it's going away. Um, I don't, you know, it, it, it's just a, a great question, but um, I think that it's going to continue, at least with, uh, with big businesses, I think it's going to continue to be the most useful as a customer service tool. Um, my prediction for who I think eventually, I think some big brand is going to buy it, whether it, I know that Microsoft has backed out and who was the latest one? Was it Salesforce or, or. I, I don't know if I was dreaming this or I heard that Snapchat was possibly buying it, which would be awesome. I think, but oh, yeah. if, if well, anything, they, I, I, that, I have no idea if that's true, <laughs> but yeah, I hope and, it survives. Yeah, I do. I, I do too. And I think that it will, you know, it, like the, the thing that was interesting and the reason why I think it'll survive, because I don't know if you remember um, Scott Stratton on marketing, right. his uh, keynote, he talked about how um, MySpace still gets like, what was it, like 5 billion something views a, a month or like it's a dead, according to us, all of us, it's a dead site. No one uses it anymore, but the amount of traffic that it still gets. And, you know, I don't think Twitter's going away. And like you said, I hope it doesn't go away, but it's going to be interesting to see who actually ends up with it or requires it because it doesn't seem like uh, anyone's like super interested in buying it at this point. I think maybe people are just being cautious. Who knows? Maybe after the elections, people will feel a little bit more comfortable with stuff. And <laughs> True, true, true. All right. Well, Matt, thank you so much for hanging out with us on a Friday night and we will catch up with you at the next conference. Yes. Really looking forward to it. Thank, thank you for you. having me.